welcome in this video i'll show you <clears throat> welcome in this video i'll show you how to solve problem 2.42 as it appears in the third edition of griffith's introduction to quantum mechanics now this problem asks us the following it says if two or more distinct solutions to the time independent Schrodinger equation have the same energy e these states are said to be degenerate so this is our first real approach into the concept of degenerate states for example, it says the free particle states are doubly degenerate. One solution representing motion to the right, which was E i k x, and one representing motion to the left, which was the minus i k x. However, both of these had the same energy. So these states are doubly degenerate. However, we have found no normalizable solutions that are degenerate, right? This is the free particle, which was not degenerate. So we have found no normalizable solutions. Um, so it, it is degenerate, but not normalizable is what I meant. So we have found no normalizable solutions that are degenerate. And this is not an accident. So we want to prove that in one dimension, there are no degenerate bound states. So let's take a look at that. So how do we do that? Well, let's say that we have Psi1 and Psi2 which are two degenerate bound states, right? And each one of them thus satisfies the Schrodinger equation for some potential. So dx squared plus the potential times, so this is Psi1, so Psi1. So Psi1 satisfies the Schrodinger equation and Psi2 also satisfies the Schrodinger equation. Um, this looks like a two, by the way. So d squared psi 1, uh, sorry, no, 2 now. The x squared plus v psi 2, e psi 2. Okay, so both of these, so this means that psi 1 satisfies the Schrodinger equation with energy e, and psi 2 also satisfies the Schrodinger equation, but with energy e also. So two states, same energy, doubly degenerate. So how can we now check what's going on? Well, we can multiply the first equation by Psi2 and the second equation by Psi1. This is a very common trick that you will see uh, as you go into higher level uh, theoretical physics. So this is Psi1, Psi1, and Psi1 here. And this is Psi2, Psi2, Psi2. So now notice that this is the same as this, this is the same as this. So we can now subtract one equation from the other. It doesn't matter which one. I will say this is equation one, this is equation two. So let's just do one minus two. So when we do that, we get minus h bar squared over 2m factor of d squared psi one dx squared, and this still has the psi two, and then minus d squared psi two dx squared psi 1 and everything else cancelled out right this here and this here um, they cancelled out so this is equal to 0. Now of course that means that what is 0 is this part so psi 2 d squared psi 1 dx squared minus psi 1 d squared psi 2 dx squared, this is equal to zero. And this is a perfect derivative. Now, you may not see it right away. Um, this is a, also a constant trick that we see when we have like one function times the der derivative of another times that other function times the derivative of the previous function, we see like, okay, maybe it's worth looking at the following expression. So the derivative of something like psi2 d psi1 dx minus psi1 d psi2 dx. And let's see what this is. And if we are lucky, we are gonna get exactly this. And if not, we may have to make some minor changes. So let's see if, because let me just pause and explain this um, because our objective, right? We want to try to simplify this uh, further. And we suspect that there is some expression that when you take the derivative, we get this 
thing. So that's why we are attempting to find said expression. Okay, so taking the derivative, we get um, product rule. So d psi 2, d x, d psi 1, d x. Then we get plus psi 2, d squared psi x, d x squared. So this is the same as this part. Then we have uh, another term. So from this, we get minus d psi 1, d x, d psi 2 dx minus, and then we get psi 1, d squared psi 2 dx squared. And that is the same as this. And notice that because these two are just scalar functions, um, they commute. These two here commute with these two. So that means, or basically this commutes with this. So that means that this cancels out this, right? So we get exactly the same as we had before. So that means that we can just rewrite this. These two expressions are equivalent. So for that reason, we can now continue working with this. And this means, since this is equal to zero, right? We have zero is equal to the derivative of what we have in here. That means that the interior of the bracket has to be a constant with respect to x right? It has to be some constant. So that means that psi 2 d psi 1 dx minus psi 1 d psi 2 dx has to be equal to some constant. Okay, but let's keep in mind what is the condition so that our wave function can be normalizable. For it to be normalizable, we need that as x goes to infinity, we need that psi 1 and psi 2, right? Both of them have to be normalizable. They have to go to 0. And this here has to hold for every single x, right? For every single x, this is a constant. So if we go to infinity, if x goes to infinity, this still has to hold. But at, this, at, at that point, the left-hand side will become 0. So our constant has to be zero as well, right? So that lets us see that psi two d psi one over dx um, is equal to psi one d psi two dx. And this is a differential equation that we can easily solve by separating the variables. So everything with psi one to the left, so we get one over psi one d psi one dx, and this is equal to one over psi two d psi 2 dx. And now we integrate both sides and we get the natural log of psi 1 is equal to the natural log of psi 2 plus some constant. And now we can exponentiate all of this and we get psi 1 is equal to psi 2 times e to the power of some constant, which is still just some constant. So this means that if we have a one-dimensional problem where we have two states with the same energy, then we have just proven that if they are normalizable, super important, only if they are normalizable and have the same energy, then those states are actually the same. One is a constant uh, factor of the other. One is like twice or three times or a third or ten times the other, but they are not really independent. It is the same state, but with a different normalization factor. All right, so that is what's important. So there we have proven um, that in one dimension, we do not have degenerate bound states. So I hope this was useful to you. If it was, no, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe. And if you really enjoy the content, maybe consider checking out my Patreon. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.